Hello, everybody. So I am doing a uh, some hand reading today. And what this is, is actually I am doing uh, tw uh, 66 full days of hand reading, where I'm going to be showing you um, one hand per day. Let me mute this puppy. Good, good. Okay. So screen's looking good. We're ready up on Twitch. It's been a while. I'm getting used to this Twitch thing again. Um, but anyway, yeah, so this is day one of 66 days in a row of hand reading. In a recent episode number 153, I put out a challenge to everyone to do 66 days of hand reading. Well, I've been doing hand reading for, uh, for years now, but I've never actually challenged myself to do 66 days in a row. Um, oftentimes, I, I did one in the 28 days of study where I did 28 full days, um, and I do one at least four times a week, at least four. It's not often that I get to all seven days a week where I do it, but right now, 66 days in a row, I offered that challenge in episode 153, so now I am challenging all of you, just follow along with me as I do it here. See how I learn, see how much better I get at the game of poker, how much um, uh, how much easier hand reading comes to me. How, hopefully, through this process of 66 full days, my hand reading in game will be a lot better as well. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very different thing, hand reading off the felt when you have all the time in the world. You have Flopzilla, you have Poker Tracker 4, you have time to look at your opponent's history and assign ranges. It's one thing doing that versus doing it live. Uh, when you're online, you only have like 15 or 20 seconds to act every time, you know? So you've got to be uh, practicing it off the felt to get better on the felt and that's what this is all about this practice should translate to better on the felt play and during this whole uh, 66 days of hand reading challenge I'm not going to I'm not going to spend the time going through every single step and explaining everything as I go I'm basically going to be just doing my regular hand reading taking notes as I would as I would normally take them uh, do the hand reading like normal and we'll see if I'm correct how often I'm correct how often I'm uh, incorrect and all that stuff but uh, if you do want more on hand reading the hand reading med series of podcasts it's out there now iTunes SoundCloud Stitcher wherever you want and you can see on the screen right there episode 149 is part one of my med on hand reading alrighty let's get to it whip out the database so we're looking through old hands that I just don't remember at all February hands right now um, you could see in February I didn't play that much at all came back from vacation was working on my book and stuff but so let's take a look at some hands here let's actually go to showdown hands uh, okay let's see oh looking real quick I'll, I'll do some explanations up front but as the 66 days go on i'm not going to be explaining nearly as much um oh i don't know if you can hear it but i have my uh classical music playing on my uh, echo device so uh yeah so when you run through your database select the dates that you want to look for look for hands that went to showdown those are the best ones uh because you want to kind of verify how well you're doing on hand reading you know if you want to range an opponent and you know what he shows down at showdown that's great because if you don't know when you range the opponent, you end up with, uh, you know, 100 hands in his range. Well, then, if you don't get to see it at the end, you don't know if you're right or wrong. The practice is good, but being able to verify is even better. So I always do uh, hand his or hand reading with showdown hands for sure. So if we're looking through here, we can start off on the button. We might as well. Um, I have the pro. I, I have the report here categorized how I want facing preflop action and the actual preflop action that I uh that I did, my flop, my turn, my river action. And what I often do is I'll look at these and I'll determine if it looks like a good hand with a lot of action uh, for hand reading. So um, we're looking at my big losing hands. If we click this, we see some winning hands here. But when you're on ACR, the winning network, um, the winning hands don't often show. Um, let's take a look real here, real quick. The, off, the winning hands, you don't often get to see the loser's hand. Yeah, so we don't get to see his hand, so we could hand read him through this hand, but like I said, I want to see showdowns, so we won't do that. We're looking at losing hands, because when you're losing, the winner always has to show their hand, so you get to see it. So we lost seven bucks in this 25 NL table. Uh, we raised preflop, we bet bet, and then we called on the river. Interesting. Let's take a look at this hand here. All right, so before that goes up, actually, um, 
let's see here, here's the hand. Let me go over the tools that I use. The first tool that I use is Flopzilla, of course. I do all of my hand reading with Flopzilla. Uh, if you don't have it for yourself, I really recommend Flopzilla, uh, just www.flopzilla.com to download that puppy. Uh, let's see here, and then we got the hand up, Flopzilla, and of course, I like to use Split Suits hand reading templates. So if you want the, uh, the hand reading template for yourself, all you have to do right there at the bottom of the screen there, um, splitsuit.com slash templates. And they're free templates, but you can donate. I donated $10 for templates. And I'll show you how I use them here today. So hand number. It helps me go back and um, find them later on. What is the date for this hand? Uh, two, three. So then I, uh, I often will put in some information about the hand here for the notes, button, ace eight suited. Let's see what we got here. So this guy limps, we decide to raise, two full. So he's gonna be our villain. Our villain is redeem me. Villain, open limped, what does he do next? Open limp call. Okay, great. So we've got the ace eight suited. Before we enter in Flopzilla, before we enter in our uh, dead cards, let's take a look at what his range probably is. So he limped and then raised. What do we know about him? First, we look at history. He's an 11-6 player, pretty nitty, but it's only out of 18 hands. So it's really hard to tell right now what he has. So it's got to kind of guess. You know, we don't know much about the guy at all. Um, Let's go 13, 17% range. Let's see here. All pocket pairs. He's probably going to open nines or better. Nines could be a limp calling hand. Let's say tens are better. He's definitely opening. So tens are better opening, ace queen opening instead of limping. Ace jack, ace 10 off. Yeah, we could say that those are Broadway cards. Um, he is in, he's in the cutoff, right? So the cutoff, open limp position and then what did we yeah he called open limp called us right here so um he open limps and he calls pretty nitty he is in the cutoff he only has three players to worry about so he might be kind of on a slightly wider limpy calling range is he calling down to six five suited maybe let's go seven six suited let's say all broadways except the best ones he's raising the suited aces because everybody likes playing suited aces 17% seems pretty wide, but I don't really want to discount. I mean, we could say he's raising those. He's raising the ace jack. We could say that. Um, but then the ace tens maybe are just calling. So let's just keep this for now. I imagine we'll, we'll be ditching a lot of these hands as the hand progresses. So he has a 208 combos, 15.7%. A little trickier, control, alt, and then T. Whoops. Control, alt, T. And then the range import export pops up. Control C to copy it. Paste it right there. It was 15.7% uh, and 208 combos. Great. So that's their pre-flop range. Now let's look at ace eight suited. Put it in. Um, oh, before we put it in, let's, let's imagine, this is great practice when you're hand reading. Let's imagine what our equity is versus this range before we enter it in. So ace eight suited has an ace, he has plenty of pocket pairs. Um, we do beat all of those broadways and suited connectors. Um, not beat, but we're ahead of them currently. But he does have a couple ace. Um, I think we're a 55% favorite ace eight suited. 54%, so close, close enough. Um, so 54% favorite against this range that we're assigning him pre-flop. He limps and he calls a four full, a four, a full four big blinds. And this is great. We're in position going to the flop versus a nitty player. Let's see what happens. Ace, queen, nine. How does that affect equities? Well, we hit a pair. And now our pair is above all of his pairs, all those broadways that whiff. Um, I guess he has flushes and stuff, but like we've got to be a 60, 70% uh, favorite. Wow, way lower, 64%. I guess he has some aces that are better than us. He has plenty of flushes that he hit. One set of nines. Yeah, so there, there's some stuff. But, I mean, we're still we're still quite ahead of favor. We're not a 70%, but we're still pretty good here. So we love this flop. We're doing good against his range. Oh, how many parts, what parts of his range hit a flush? 
only 3%. So you can see this is a decently wide range um, and only 3% of it hit the flush. We don't have that much really to be worried about right now. Let's see what the action is though. Um, if I remember the action was we bet, bet, and then called. So I guess he's check calling two streets here. We bet mm, half pot and then he just calls. So what is check calling on this flop? Flushes, I think flushes at this point are check calling. Um, they're just gonna string us along one street to see what happens, especially because some of his flushes, look at that, two of them are nut flushes with the king high. One, two, three are non-nut flushes, but I mean, still two thirds, yeah, he's checking here just to get some value out of us. Um, if he has one of those baby flushes, he's not scared just yet. So he's checking those and calling. Um, sets. Maybe he'd want to see one more street and assess in case we have an overset or we hit our flush and he's worried. I mean, he's a nitty player. He might not be playing bottom set super aggressively. So I think a check call, at least one street is in order with the set. Two pairs. Uh, oh, only ace nine. Yeah, because he doesn't have ace queen because we said he'd raise pre-flop with ace queen. Um, two pair can check call right there. It's not like he's super strong and doesn't need to shove a, try to shove us off of a random diamond just yet. Um, top pair hands yeah check calling uh, uh, afraid of all the three diamonds because all those top pair hands other than ace 10 ace 10 of diamonds or ace 10 offsuit there's a couple diamonds there or one diamond with the 10 so he has a flush draw there he would just check call um, the flush draw ace 10 too yep uh, no flush draw pocket pair below top pair are those check no middle pair are those check calling here they might call check call one street just to see what we do. We could be bluffing without an ace and we check behind on the turn. So I say one street check calling. Weak pairs, nah, let's get rid of those. No made hands, we don't need to filter for that. Nut flushes are check calling. He could check raise, but he's nitty so far. Maybe he'll tighten up and not get so aggressive yet. It's, it's possible at least nut flush. Second nut flush calling, third nut flush check calling. Weak flush draws, those are all the pairs. They're an under pair and it's a weak flush draw. Let's say those aren't check calling. Let's take those out of the range. And then open ended straight draws, jack 10 suited, and offsuit. Offsuit could have flush draws as well. Yeah, so let's keep those in. Gut shots. King jack, king 10. Let's not say those will call. Let's take those out of the range. Yeah. It's just, it's just such ugly. We, well, if it's a gut shot with a flush draw, but those are already included. So let's remove that. So we've taken him down from pre flop. Uh, to now only 58.6% of his range and 95 combos. It's pretty good. 95 and was it 58.6% of his range? 58.6, great. So uh, we've effectively narrowed him down from 200 hands pre-flop. We've taken away almost 60% of hands. So we've got this guy pegged pretty much. On this range now, our equity dropped from 63 to 54% because he's staying in with a lot of stronger hands and ditching the weaker stuff. Although some of those draws are staying in right there. Nice. Okay, so next street comes the seven of hearts. Now, seven of hearts, I don't think that would help. It doesn't help. No draws are completed. So I think our equity goes up to, I don't know, back to 63% or so. It did. Sweet. 63% again on the seven hearts on the turn. That's a great card for us. We're not scared at all. That didn't complete any of his flesh draws. Didn't complete a straight draw. I guess it gave him two pair, right, with a seven. So now a hand that we did beat before is currently beating us with a seven. That two pair, but uh, which he could have stayed in with. So on that one right there, let's see. Do we increase our bet? Still half pot. And he check calls again, like we knew. So what hands are going to check call here? Um, what is this? The pot's $9. He has 15 behind. If he had a killer hand, this is the time to make a min raise in order to easily get it all in on the river. Because even if we flop two pair ace queen, he has a king high flush right here. Um... If he had that, he would need to raise here to make it a less than one-to-one -one stack to pot ratio to get it in. So, uh, what is he check calling with? I think his flushes. Okay, let's filter this. He is not check calling with his. I think he's check raising with the nutters. 
He might check call with just the jack high thinking we could have the king or the queen high flush just worried about that so let's not say those are check these are check calling these ones right here so we kind of narrow that down just a little bit his straights well no straights possible yet his sets i think at this point he's probably still if he check called with a set on the flop he check called with a set on the turn here the seven doesn't help me it doesn't scare him it doesn't add any draws he's not worried about it he's check calling again uh two pair check calling again on the ugly on the scary board i have ace queen in my range i have pocket aces pocket queens as well for higher sets and stuff beating two pair he's just check calling there top pair now top pairs are just check calling once again middle pairs those are not check calling a second half pot bet no so we'll leave those off nut flush draws i think with his nitty nature nut flush draws are check calling second nut flush with the jack, oh, with the queen, no, not the queen, the jack of diamonds, yeah, that's right, jacks are check calling, third nut flush, what is that, oh, the random tens, okay, we could say the third, mm, yeah, third nut flushes are check calling, and the open end straight draw, what is it, jack ten still, yeah, those are still calling, check calling one more street, hoping to hit, and then probably just ditching if he doesn't hit on the river, right there, so I think that's what he's check calling with, so we've taken him down another 70% from the flop range, which is only 65 combos now. Great. 69.1%. Uh, oh, what was that combo? 65. 65 combos. So we took him down from 208 pre-flop to 65 now. We've effectively taken away 65 percent of his range which is great from his pre-flop range which is lovely now with this range we actually we drop back down to 55 percent we still have top pair he does have some draws in his range still so we're susceptible here let's see what happens on that river and i'm glad we have position on the river we can pot control we can fold if he shoves we can bet if we uh if we don't think he has anything and the river comes a blank whatever we have a lot of options being in position right here so the king of clubs comes. Interesting, before we put that in, the king of clubs, so we say he has draws. He also has some kings. So now he has like king, queen, not king, nine, king, queen. So he has the king hits him. The king doesn't help us at all, but it does complete some of his draws. So I think we're going to be roughly 50% equity on this king of clubs. Maybe... Yeah, 50%. Wow, we dropped 35% equity against this range. Why is that? Well, it definitely didn't help us. We still only have top pair weak kicker. So we're beat by a lot of stuff. And he made he made 15 new straight hands right there. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. So many good hands were added because he had the straight draw. It didn't complete a flush draw, but yeah hit that straight and plus he hit some two pair king queen type stuff so the queen totally helped him just hurt our range our equity went down to 35 percent right here let's see what happens he decides to bet three bucks what is that what is a three dollar bet okay king of diamonds right a flush draw king of diamonds a check called check called now he's making a blocking bet um, hoping we don't shove and he just wants to see, see showdown with a with a uh, what you call it with a showdown worthy hand um, it could be a random ace yeah there's a lot of stuff that's just making a block bet essentially because you're not going for value I bet half pot twice if you're going for value you'd want to at least bet half pot right so this is a blocking bet intended to see showdown at his price it's not a value bet mm -mm. value would be half pot or even bigger thinking that I have something worth calling if he has a flush or if he had a straight or if he has a good set of trips that the king he doesn't think helped me something like that yeah so the king of clubs come um he doesn't have one of those flushes he'd bet more with the flushes no I can see it because they're not nut flushes he's just making a blocking bet okay let's keep the flushes in yeah uh, the straights, 
if he has a jack-10, he suddenly rivered his straight. So he rivered his value hand, but he's scared of the flush. And he doesn't want me to check behind, so he wants some value. Straights would make a bet right here. Sets, it's only a set of nines. It didn't bode up, so he might still be behind aces or queens. Or a set of aces, set of queens. He might be behind a flush, and he's worried, so he's making a blocking bet. Those will bet that. The two pair, I think two pairs are... Uh, the king doesn't, I mean... I think two pairs can make a blocking bet, too. Top pair, I don't think top pairs are making a blocking bet right here. Um, blocking slash value bet. I think they're just check calling, hoping for a small. Actually, they could make a blocking bet because it's so small. He just wants to see showdown, so he has some kind of a pair. I don't think he's doing it with middle pair kind of a stuff. So against this range, wow, our equity dropped down to 13%. Holy cow. 75%. What was the combos? So we took him down just to 47 combos of hands. Start off with two, 210. 200 hands down to 47 so we've removed 75 percent of his range that is great assuming assuming we've ranged him right up to this point um so those that's what we put him on let's see what he ends up having jack 10 offsuit for the rivered straight and we have jack 10 offsuit in the range so we were accurate um was one of them a diamond it was a jack of diamonds as well. So not only did he have the open ender, he also had the second nut flush draw the whole time. Wow. So that is something else. Uh, so let's see here. He opened limp and then called. ISO to four BBs. Flop, ace of diamonds, queen of diamonds, nine of diamonds. Turn. What was the turn? Seven of hearts. River, king of clubs. Correct in my reading. Taking him from 208 combos pre to 47. On the river. Great. So what I'm going to end up doing now is just saving this. Um, uh, saving this template so I can come back and, and just uh, you know review it at any time. Nice and simple. Like let's say for example, let's uh, let's clear, 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 clear all fields. We can see that I had ace eight suited right there, right? Ace and an eight. And then this range, all you have to do, highlight it, control C. Bam, there's the range. And so I know that there was a ace, queen, nine, all diamonds, ace, queen, nine. Oh, whatever. Wrong. Um, and so, bam, there it is again. We can just replay the hand with all of this information right here. So it's a great way to record your progress. So correct in my reading. Great. So what does that mean? Score. One out of 66. No. One out of one because it's day one right now. Sweet. So I'll save this. And uh, yeah, so that's hand reading right now. Thank you very much uh, for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. And I will be back tomorrow uh, for another hand reading practice. So catch you later.